So we've had quite a bit of rain over the last few days. Unfortunately, it's washed a bit of the snow away. Uh, but that did get me thinking. Because Glencoe stands for Glen of Weeping or Crying, I thought it would be quite nice to do a little blog about waterfalls. So this is my blog about how to shoot. So I'm currently down Glen Etive here and Glen Etive, the River Etive, has got a wonderful set of waterfall features all the way down and in fact it's a very popular area for kayaking um, down here. And it's a lovely little location, I've got secluded at the moment because it's so quiet and obviously the restrictions don't be here. Um, so I am very lucky to be able to shoot here because I live here. Um, and we've got some great waterfalls and I've brought you to one of these waterfalls which is going to be great. I'm going to try and shoot this. So the golden rule with landscape photography is never leave the location until you're 100% sure you've got the photograph in the camera. And that's very much true with waterfalls. So take your time with waterfalls and what I tend to do is I'll take a series of shots at different shutter speeds. And what that does is when I go home that gives me the options to choose the right one that works for me. And the reason for that is sometimes I really slow shutter speed is a very milky sort of texture and that works fine with sort of slower flowing waterfalls but then if you have a really fast shutter speed what you do then is you can freeze the action a little bit and you have to make that decision depending on the waterfall what should speed work for how fast it's flowing the danger with going too slow a shutter speed with fast flowing waterfalls is everything goes very milky and you lose all the detail of the water and then that gives you that lack of motion and movement which is what you're looking for. So we're here all set up in front of this beautiful waterfall now and because I'm shooting into the sun I've decided to put on a 0.9 which is a three stop soft graduating filter 
and that's because I'm expecting the sky to be blown out because the dynamic range would be too much for my camera. I always use a soft um, graduated filter in the Highlands here because we don't get nice flat horizons. I've also gone on and put a three stop filter on there which is a full filter and that's just to slow the light coming in which will mean I'll need to get the shutter open a bit longer which allows me to blur the water a bit. As the shot went on I did actually go up to a point to a six stop filter and then I ended up going onto the big stopper by the end which was the ten stop filter. What I'm doing now is I'm just waiting for the light. I've got my shot set up and everything looks good. I've got a bit of light coming here and I've got that lovely rays. You can just kind of see it in the camera here. The rays of light as the sun's coming over my left hand side here. So hopefully we'll get some sun ray bursts over that little dip in the rock there in front of us and that should come out in the shot. How varying the shutter speed can give you a different look to your waterfalls. I've taken several shots at this location at different shutter speeds. This first one is at five seconds, so this is a very long exposure, and as you can see, it's made the waterfall go very milky. The next one is a bit more texture and detail, and this one is half a second, and as you can see, you can see some more texture in the waterfall itself. As we speed up the shutter speed, this is a quarter of a second, and now you can see. You start seeing some patterns in the falls, but it's a bit dirty. This is an eighth of a second, and this is really not what I prefer. It looks very dirty in the waterfall, and it's not a nice clean sh clean look. This final one is fifteenth of a second, and it's a not a great shot. And if you're going to do waterfalls, you've got to either blur it or you've got to freeze the action super fast. I've put all the waterfalls together at different shutter speeds and you can see which one you prefer and that's entirely up to you. Remember, if you're going to do a waterfall it's either going to be blurred or you've got to go super fast, 200th of a second to freeze the action. Anywhere in between makes you look amateurish.
further down Glen Etiquia. And the good thing with this is, is it's quite, even though it's a fast going waterfall, the height you are and the distance you're away from the shot actually can get away with some really slow shot speeds. So I'm going to try a 10 second shot or something like that, see if we can really make this water blurry and that feel of motion. There's something in the air 